I am from Texas, uh, but I live in New York City now. And, uh, and I was walking around in Brooklyn where I live, and I saw something. Uh, I saw a white dude getting arrested. which it turns out is a thing that I love to see. <laughs> I had no idea that was even a thing I was interested in. <laughs> like, you know, like it shocked me so much that I started saying things that I'd never said before in my entire life. Like I saw this dude being put into handcuffs and being put into the squad car and I just heard myself go, hey, go police! Like I just, <laughs> I just shouted it at the top of my lungs like it was my favorite sports team. I was like, hey, go Big Blue! <laughs> Y'all killing it out there, baby. Undefeated season, yeah. <laughs> Ain't nobody taking y'all down this year. <laughs> Became a Blue Lives Matter dude. I lost myself. I lost myself. <laughs> when I was in high school, Lil Wayne was the biggest rapper in the world. He was, he was the absolute biggest rapper. There was nobody bigger than him. Uh, and he had a lot of songs uh, where he would say, fuck bitches, get money. And because of that, I went to a high school with a lot of dudes who would say money over bitches a lot. A lot. <laughs> it is not necessarily like a thing that I support, but it is a thing that I was just like around a lot. You know, like we'd be doing an icebreaker on the first day of class and like a kid, you know, named like Darius or something like that would be like, oh, okay, miss, you wanna know something about me? <laughs> I was like, you wanna know something about me and my lifestyle and how I'm living? <laughs> Okay, you wanna know something about like my own personal beliefs and just what I feel on the inside of my heart? You trying to, you try, I mean, I'd have to say first and foremost, it's money over bitches. That's, that's uh, just kind of how I'm feeling. That's <laughs> just where I'm at. That's a thing that would happen in my classes constantly, every day, all the time. And it's like, I never said anything to those kids, but I always wanted to be like, yeah, bruh, uh, how often is that a problem for you? <laughs> You don't even have a driver's permit yet. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't seem like it should be an issue for you. You know, you don't have a car, you don't have a job. If anything, you a moneyless bitch. That's, <laughs> you know? And also, if you feel like your life is money over bitches, like if you feel like that's the way your life is like planned out, I feel like if anything, that's probably a time management issue, right? <laughs> You know, like you could plot it out the right way. Like if you wanted to fit it all, like you could do it. Like you could do, you could do money from nine to five plausibly, all right? You could do bitches from five to seven plausibly. <laughs> and still have time for a third activity, right? <laughs> You know, draw yourself up a little Google calendar. They got it, they're accessible. You get yourself a calendar, next thing you know, that's money, bitches, rock climbing. You got that all in your... <laughs> That's all in your environment, dog. You could do that. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about cultural appropriation and like where it comes from. You know, like it's a thing. It's a thing that that there's a lot of conversation about. You know, I'm on Twitter. I see what people are talking about. Like, why are why are white people appropriating like black culture so much? You know, where does it come from? Uh, and I like I had to sit down and like think about it for a long time and think about like why that happened and where it came from. Uh, and I think, it's, I think it's every black comedian from the 80s fault. <laughs> I think they made that mistake because it's like black people just are the coolest group of people, objectively. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just true. That's just, they just, black people just are the coolest group of people. And I think if you see like the coolest group of people just teasing you for like a very long time, then it's gonna, <laughs> it's just gonna shift how you act. <laughs> You know, I think that's all, like, I think that, like, I think that black people just, like, teased white people for such a long time that they were just gonna change their entire behavior. <laughs> you know, like, I think, like, white people were chilling and just, like, living their lives, and they saw Eddie Murphy just, like, do an impression of a white person, and anytime he did it, he was always like, <laughs> oh, 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 I left my mayonnaise in my station wagon. <laughs> and, like, I think white people just watch that happen for a long time and they're like, hey, fuck it, we getting cornrows. How about that? <laughs> That's Eddie's fault. That's Eddie's fault. He did that for all of us. Anytime you see a nigga just like do it, like having like dreadlocks, doing yoga, that's on Eddie. That's... <laughs> <laughs>